The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. The Bible remains the authoritative platform for Christian teaching. The Bible remains the authoritative platform for Christian teaching, beliefs, practice, devotion, correction, and instruction. The Bible remains the authoritative platform for Christian teaching, beliefs, practice, devotion, correction, and instruction. Brother Paul will speak these words to a protege of his by the name Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 16. And he says to Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now before he said that to Timothy, he first of all said to Timothy in verse 15, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So the scriptures remain the platform for Christianity. The scriptures remain the platform for Christianity. We don't resort to philosophers' materials. We do not resort or consult philosophers' materials. We don't resort to one quotation or another quotation to either form a basis of the faith. We do not rely on extra biblical materials. We do not need the assistance of any extra biblical material to form the basis of the faith. Please, this foundation is so important, very, very important to this journey. So the Bible remains what we have. It has been preserved for years. The Bible remains what we have and it has been preserved for years. Written firstly by Moses, the judges, the prophets. Then David, to the writers of the four gospels, the book of Acts of the apostles, the epistles, and the book of Revelation. Such a compendium of insight, a compendium of revelation, revealing the mind of God to us. It's a compendium of insight, a compendium of revelation that unveils to us the mind, the plan, the thoughts, intent, and the character of God. The Bible reveals to us the mind of God, the plan of God, the intent of God, the purpose of God, reveals to us the character of God and the personality of God. To us in Christ, God is not mysterious or a mysterious being. God is not afar or far away, locked up somewhere in a place called heaven where nobody can approach. To us, God is revealed through the Holy Scriptures. God is revealed through the Holy Scriptures. That's why we must be careful and attentive at the same time. Dutiful with the Bible. We must be careful, we must be attentive, and we must be dutiful with the Bible. Please, this is very, very important. In fact, you cannot live the Christian life beyond how much you appreciate and extol the truth contained in the scriptures. You cannot live the Christian life above or beyond how much you appreciate and extol the truth that is contained in the scriptures. I say oftentimes, the Bible remains the only inspired material. The Bible remains the only inspired material. Every other inspired preaching, every other inspired preaching 
and teaching. Every other inspired book must be at the inspiration of the Bible. The Bible remains the only inspired material. Every other preaching, every other teaching, and every other book must be at the inspiration of the Bible. Every other inspired book must be at the inspiration of the Bible. And it's to that degree that we can call the book inspired when it bears the inspiration of the Bible. Now look at this. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse number 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The King James Version says study to show yourself approved unto God. But really the original because of the Greek word used here had a semblance of study because study has to do with a laborious research into something. Okay, When we say you're studying something it means you're engaging in a laborious research into something. Instead the word there is not study it's the word diligence. Pudazo to show yourself approved unto God, not unto man, unto God, unto God, not unto your fellowship, not unto your church, not unto television. To show yourself approved unto God, but to show yourself approved unto God as a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, what is in my hands now, called the Holy Bible, demands a right division, as it were. It demands a right division, as it were, of it. Now, I told you that when he gave this responsibility to Timothy, he was not referring to the epistles. When he said, study to show yourself approved unto God, or be diligent to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He was not referring to dividing the epistles because the epistles are scriptures rightly divided. The epistles are scriptures that are already rightly divided. You don't rightly divide the epistles. They are scriptures that are already rightly divided. That is why the epistles are the end point of revelation and insight. The epistles are the end point of revelation and insight. But what he was referring to, rightly dividing the word of truth, was all the scripture. Because he spoke about it later on in 2 Timothy 3, 15 and 16. And that from a child there was known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness. He was referring to Genesis to Malachi and by identification the four gospels so genesis to malachi are given by inspiration of god and genesis to malachi are profitable the word ophilimos useful or advantageous for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness right so he says to rightly divide the word rightly divide is a strange word because no Greek writer of the Bible uses that word again after 2 Timothy 2.15. No Greek writer employed the usage of that word ototomio. You know, another way to pronounce this is ototomoinia. Ototomoinia. O-R-T-H-O-T-O-M-O-U-N-I-A. It was a word lifted from the Septuagint Greek the Septuagint, that is the Hebrew writing, so you don't have it there. You know, you don't have the connotation, you don't have any historical antecedent
to the use of that word because every word used in every language has a history. Every word that is used in every language, you can trace where that word was coined from. It has a history. But this particular word, ototomio, you can't find it, its antecedents. So that's why no other writer employed the usage of that word. There is always a practice, an act, or a practice, an act, an art, a practice, an act, an art that leads to the coinage of the world. But in the Greek etymology, there is no history for the usage of the word ototomio. So we can only look at where it was lifted from. It was lifted, that word, from three Hebrew words. It was lifted from three Hebrew words. The word vashar. Vashar. V-A-S-H-A-R. Another word, P-L. P-I-E-L. And another word, Temno. T-E-M-N-O. Vashar, P-L, and Temno. Those words were lumped together only once in the Old Testament. They were lumped together only once in the Old Testament. The only place where we can find the meaning of this word is in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Next verse. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The word direct means to make straight, to straighten, to make straight, to straighten. That's where we get rightly dividing, to make straight, to straighten, all right? When you are saying divide, it means you will cut things into two, to divide, to cut things into two. Anytime you find a bush and you want to create a path in that bush, what do you do? You use your cutlass, you cut into two, you, you create a demarcation between this side of the bush and this side of the bush and you create a path so to cut through a path to rightly divide to cut through a path the word ototomio so that he will make the path straight or he will direct your paths the word direct means to make straight to make straight so in second timothy 2 15 the next word lets us see the intent of that statement he said, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So in making the part, you are dividing the word of truth. So there is the rightly dividing is to make a path, to carve out a path, to create a path. What is that part? That part is the word of truth. To divide with an intent to arrive at the word of truth within that conversation. To arrive at the word of truth within that conversation. In other words, the intent of Bible study, the intent of teaching and preaching, the intent is one thing. The intent of Bible study, the intent of preaching and teaching, it's one thing. Just one thing. It's not to quote scriptures. That doesn't show that you understand the intent. The intent is not to excite and wow people. The intent is to show forth the word of truth. The intent of Bible teaching, the intent of preaching, the intent of Bible study is to show the word of truth. Please pay attention. Which is the subject matter of all Bible reading and interpretation. To show the word of truth is the subject matter of all Bible reading and interpretation. In Luke chapter 24, we find Jesus doing the very first Bible study. I mean, the very first Bible study. The very first. When we say Bible study, we are going to engage in Bible study in some minutes. Some minutes from now. Jesus met some folks on the road to Emmaus. His disciples, which were arguing on the events of the past three days. How that the prophet that they believed in was killed. 
and how that this prophet they thought he was the one that was going to restore political power and political relevance to Israel and to make matters worse some women went to the grave and they said they didn't even find him there but met some mysterious beings who told them he was no longer there then in verse 25 of Luke 24 Jesus looked at these guys and said to them oh fools and slow of heart to believe if your Bible was mine I will underline to believe slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken ought not Christ to believe all that the prophets have spoken so what did the prophets speak from their words if you read carefully ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory so two things number one Christ ought to have suffered these things these things number two and to enter into his glory so everything the prophet spoke about was what the Christ ought to suffer and the glory that he will enter into you know into that's what they were all communicating verse 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself that's the book of Genesis or better still when we say beginning at Moses we're talking about Exodus and all the prophets what is study he expounded unto them or he revealed unto them that is expounding unto them or to rightly divide he revealed unto them in all the scriptures the things he revealed unto them in all the scriptures the things look at that word the things the things is a compound word that is a group that can refer a compound word or a group that can refer to a person that can refer to a thing and that can refer to an object the things a compound word a group of words that can refer to a thing an object or to an event to an event the things also it can refer to a statement or that can refer to an activity concerning himself the things a compound word that can refer to a group of things a group of things like an object an event a statement an activity concerning himself please pay attention so in Torah Bible study we will look from Moses down to Malachi we will look from Moses down to Malachi things events statements made objects which will refer to animals things like a building a planting a plant that concerns him the things that's what we're looking for so in proper bible study we will look or refer to objects like animals things like a building a planting a plant that concerns him so rightly dividing the word of truth is amongst all those things it's amongst all those things to expound the Christ if you are still in the building can I have a good amen okay to expound who the Christ look at what Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 says God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by in and by the prophets that is in all the varying experiences he spoke to the fathers by the prophets in all the varying experiences so a bible study will be to expound christ from genesis down to malachi 
the things somebody say the things can i hear it like you have some strength in your body the things that means those things will speak of either the sufferings of christ or they will speak of the glory that will follow those things will either speak of the sufferings of christ or they will speak of the glory that will follow in fact in verse 44 to 45 of that same luke 24 44 to 45 and 46 he said unto them these are the words which i spoke unto you while i was yet with you that all these things or all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and in the prophets and in the psalms concerning me next verse then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures next verse watch verse 46 and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behooved christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day you see what he did to them he showed them god's word in the scriptures so in this study christianity in simple terms now imagine translation say you were in the church 2000 years ago either in the church at antioch or you were at the church in ephesus or you were in one of those churches in thessalonica and all you had was genesis to malachi the entire bible you had was genesis to malachi because that was the bible study of those days where they will look through those books and in looking through those books they are identifying things concerning the christ so in the epistles what the apostles taught was their identification with christ that was the focus of the apostolic teachings their identification with christ what it meant to us what it reveals to you and i at the end of the day so in john chapter 1 a man by the name of philip saith to nathaniel john 1 45 we have found him of whom moses in the law and the prophets did write jesus of nazareth the son of joseph wow we have found him in these things we have found him so ladies and gentlemen we will do what jesus did in luke 24 and we will come to genesis chapter 1 and identify these things these things so how do we rightly divide genesis chapter 1 notice that jesus is rightly dividing jesus taught things concerning himself that's the bias of bible study he taught things concerning himself if you see here can i have a powerful amen in john 5 39 jesus will say to the jews of that day john 5 39 you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me wow look at that which shows you that his teaching ministry is not validated by how much scriptures you quote or how much sermons you are able to derive from your quotation but jesus says to those guys you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life but they are they the scriptures which testify of me and you will not come to me that you might have life you will not come to me but you might have life so he says the scriptures what is the scriptures again genesis to malachi all right the scriptures which is genesis to malachi it's very easy to look at the epistles and you read from romans to corinthians to galatians to ephesians to colossians to all the thessalonians i mean the book of thessalonians and, and down to revelation and see in christ through christ by whom in whom all right 
it's easy to look at all of that and you think you have done justice to bible study well those books are already rightly divided you don't need any much work just understand what is written there in context and you're good to go all right it's easy to see christ because he's painted like that for you in christ through christ in whom by whom through whom but then what people often encounter as difficulty is the ability to handle the old testament we are paul actually said to timothy to rightly divide rightly dividing the word of truth so you look at genesis and you say what are the things concerning christ genesis chapter 1 verse 1 the first statement says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth you will now move to john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god in case you want to know who that word was verse 14 and the word was made flesh the word was made flesh which word the word that was in the beginning which beginning the beginning when god created the heavens and the earth and the word became flesh and dwelt among us he was talking about jesus the word then verse 2 of john chapter 1 the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 all things were made by him him who him the word the word who the word that became flesh all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made so genesis chapter 1 verse 1 is a christocentric scripture genesis 1 1 is a christocentric christ-centered scripture so you can say in the beginning christ created the heavens and the earth that's the way to put it in the beginning christ created the heavens and the earth genesis chapter 1 verse 2 now is telling you the history of that creation the earth was without form genesis 1 2 and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters next verse and god said let there be light and there was light that is the history the history of that creation then brother paul now takes that darkness and takes that let there be light and brought it to the epistles to rightly divide second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 to 6 second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 to 6 in whom the god of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them next verse for we preach not ourselves but christ jesus the lord and ourselves your servants for god's sake next verse now for god who commanded the light to shine out of darkness the earth was without form void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved and god said for god who commanded god who god the word the word who the word that became flesh commanded the light to shine out of darkness he has now shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ so what we read in genesis chapter 1 verse 3 is actually symbolic of the light of christ god who commanded the light to shine out of darkness talking of genesis 1 3 let there be light or light be light was has commanded which means that genesis 1 3 is symbolic of christ symbolic of christ or is concerning the christ jesus said it clearly in john chapter 8 verse 12 john 8 12 i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life as we have seen the light here speaks not of the sun the moon the stars that gives light to the earth that's not what he's referring to he didn't speak of the sun because the sun was created with the light 
The sun is what gives light upon the earth today. The moon gets its light from the sun. It's called lesser light and the sun is called greater light. But in Genesis 1-3, he was not teaching about physical light. Rather, the symbolic representation of Jesus Christ himself. John chapter 1 verse 3. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Now talking about that Genesis account of Christ Jesus. It says, and the light shines in darkness. Same Genesis account, John 1, 4. Then we look further into that same Genesis, and we see a man was created in Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now again, we look back and we see in the Psalms. Let us make man, 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 man. Let us make man in our image then david interrogates that genesis chapter one in psalms chapter eight verse number four the book of psalms chapter eight verse number four what is man let us make man what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him next verse for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels you have made this man a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor what is man let us make man what is man for thou hast made him the man that we made in genesis a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death Thou hast made him a little lower. Then the writer of Hebrews now brings a lot more clarity from David. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 6 to 9. But one in a certain place testified saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and this set him over the work of thy hands. That's how far David went. Then the writer of Hebrews continued, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. We don't see man in charge. So man is not man, even though man is man. So since we don't see all things put under man, it cannot be man. Then we looked again, but we see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. So Genesis 1, 26 to 28 is Christ-centered, Christocentric. All right, we see Jesus. So in God speaking in Genesis 1, 26, God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. That image of God, let us make man in our image. The image of God is Jesus himself. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Next verse. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. Next verse. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. So Jesus is the image of of the invisible God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Which means Jesus pre-existed Adam. Jesus pre-existed Adam. 
The new creation, I've always said that. <laughs> Listen carefully to this one. I've always said that the new creation pre-existed Adam. The new creation pre-existed Adam. He is the image of the invisible God. In fact, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He is the express image. Jesus is the express image of God. The J.B. Phillips translation says, he is the flawless character of God. The flawless character of God. Image is where you get a mold. Where you get every other production from. When you have a mold, every other production comes from that mold. So Jesus is where they got Adam. And Adam now was to make a choice. And Adam chose death over life. We will see that shortly. So, we see Christ Jesus again, a Christocentric scripture of dominion because everything was created by him and for him. He is in dominion. He is in charge. Dominion that was therefore given in Genesis 1, 26 and 27 was for Christ Jesus. Multiplication was for Christ Jesus. Okay? Everything was for Jesus. He said, male and female created he them. He's not talking about a man now, a single man. He is talking about in Christ Jesus, there is either male nor female. We are all one in Christ. So we see that in Genesis 2, we begin to see the tree of life introduced. The tree of life. Where Genesis 3 tells us that if the man had eaten the tree of life, he would have lived forever. Genesis 3 22 the tree of life the tree of life Genesis 3 22 and the Lord God said behold the man is become as one of us to know good and evil and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever to eat the tree of life will make a man live forever remember again in him was life and the life was the light of men so in the tree of life in the tree of life we see christ jesus again in him was life the tree of life and the life was the light of men jesus is hidden in that activity of the choice is hidden in that activity of the choice that man had to make Again, man chose death over life. So Romans 6.23 now puts it like this, brother Paul. He says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift of God. Which one did God ask man to take in the garden? The tree of life. That's the gift of God. The gift of God is life. The gift of God is life. The wages of sin will be dead. But when God gives a gift, it is life. The wages of sin which man commits is dead. Man's sin, man's repercussion. But when God throws out his hand to give, the gift, which is free. You don't work for a gift. The, what God gives free is life. What man purchases is death. Wages. Okay? But the gift of God is eternal life. Life forever. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life. First John chapter 5, verse 12. He that has the son had life, and he that had not the son of God had not life. So when you see life and life eternal, you are referring to who? The person of Jesus. 
So in Genesis chapter 3, after man fell, now why am I laying the foundation this way? Because Jesus in Revelation says, Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. The beginning and the ending, say of the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Some say, where did Jesus say he is God? See I am. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning of the story and the ending of the same story. Saith the Lord. Which is, which was, and which is to come. The Almighty. I am the beginning and the end. So in the beginning, we see God's plan and purpose. In the middle, we see that purpose looking like it was thwarted. Man fell into sin and sin reigned over all. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law but then in all of man's sin and his fall in all of man's iniquity we still see the person of the christ he is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end. Genesis 3.15 When God was going to speak to the serpent pay attention and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. It shall bruise thy head that is a very horrible translation because this was taken from the Vulgate Latin Okay, this was taken from the Vulgate Latin, which has a lot of shades. The Vulgate Latin has a lot of shades. It was shaded and colored by the Catholic belief. Okay, the Latin Vulgate. It was colored and shaded with the Catholic, Catholic church beliefs that redemption came through a woman. That's the belief of the Catholic church. That redemption came through a woman. But you see, if you closely follow and you look at this in all of the scriptures. Remember, I have told you the Bible must be read together. Okay, so when you look at all of the scriptures and you look at it holistically and read through all of the scripture, you will see that the emphasis of redemption was not the woman, the emphasis was mankind. Mankind. So I will put enmity between your seed and the seed of man, is what it should read. I will put enmity between your seed and the seed of man. Because when he says the seed of man, you know, you will find that every time Jesus was called, he was called the son of man. He was always called the son of man. The son of man. The son of man came not to be ministered to, but to minister. He even called himself the son of man. The seed of man. So here again, we see Christ Jesus, who is the seed of man, the son of man. Much later, we see him clearly spoken and seen in the offering of Abel. Abel offering a more excellent sacrifice, which was a lamb and its blood. When he was dead, that gift testified. When he was dead, that gift testified that he was righteous. What gift can you bring to God that would declare you righteous? When Abel was dead, his gift testified that he was righteous. There is no gift on earth that anybody can offer that would declare you righteous. Which means the gift was Christ. That's why the gift that Abel brought was a lamb. Behold, 
the Lamb of God. So the offering of Abel was Jesus in typology. Because Romans chapter 4 verse 25 tells us, Romans 4 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Romans chapter 5 verse 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21, God made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21, please pay attention. So we look at Genesis chapter 14 and chapter 15, and we see him as the shield of Abraham. I am thy shield and your exceeding great reward. Genesis 15 verse 1. Now if you look at Noah, you will see him in Noah's ark. In Noah's ark, which means there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation. That is the reward of the judgment of sin was passed over that generation by the ark of Noah. So the ark of Noah freed those who entered it from the condemnation of his day. So the ark of Noah was symbolic of Christ in the day of Noah. This is the Bible study that Jesus had in Luke 25. We are going through the same Bible study and we are sitting in that audience on the way to Imam. No condemnation. And the Bible tells us in First Peter that that ark of Noah is like the baptism we have into Christ. Let me read it for you clearly. First Peter chapter 3 verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Next verse. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Next verse. Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was a preparing. Wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Pay attention to verse 21 now. The like figure. So the ark of Noah was a figure. The like figure were unto even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the field of the flesh. Not swimming in the river. But the answer of a good conscience towards God. How? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 22 now. Watch this. 22. Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him glory to god i like this so the ark was figurative of the baptism today that we have into jesus that baptism we have today is the baptism into jesus christ which now saves us that's why mark 16 16 will now say he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned that is figurative. So again, we see in Noah's time that Jesus is the center of that ark in figures. The Bible talks about the long suffering of God in the days of Noah. So when he says 120 years in the days of Noah, he was not talking about the lifespan of a man will be 120 years. The 120 years in the days of Noah was the years of God's long suffering. That is, God will suffer long for Noah to preach. God will be patient for 120 years before the ark will be closed. The long suffering of God. That is, God will suffer long. So it's not age. But by the way, in that time, people lived above 120 years. People live beyond that. So if the age span was 120 years, everybody should have died at 120. But there are people who live 300, 400, 500, 600 years. Which means that the 120 was the age of God's long suffering. He was saying that the long suffering of God, Noah was going to preach for 120 years. 
after which the judgment of sin was due. So in Christ, we see the long suffering of God, which is salvation. That waiting, the fact that God waited, God waited. People disbelieve Noah, God waited. That long suffering of God is salvation. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, God now says to Abraham, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding reward. Wow. Then John 8, 56. Jesus now speaking in John chapter 8, verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. So who said to Abraham, I am your shield? Jesus. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. That's Christocentric. So everything that accrued to Abraham was because of Christ. That's why Genesis 15 verse 6 will now say, after Abraham heard the message, I am your shield, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verse 1 actually, what shall we say that Abraham has found as pertaining to the righteousness of God? Was it by works? He said, no, if it was by works, he, he will not stand a chance before God. But Abraham believed God and was credited to him for righteousness. Now unto him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that walketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Can I have a good amen? So Jesus is the seed of Abraham, the true seed of Abraham. Look at Romans chapter 4 verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. I have made thee a father of many nations. This was referring to the birth of Isaac. Ishmael represented the flesh. John 1 13, which we are born not of flesh nor of blood, nor of the will of man, but of God. John 1 13. Isaac was a figure. The birth of Jesus was a miracle. The birth of Isaac was a miracle. It has ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. And Abraham had died. Then God said, you have a baby. That's a miracle. How can these things be? Seeing I know not a man. The power of the Most High shall overshadow you. That's another miracle. The seed of Abraham. <laughs> so it is the flesh first, then the spirit. It is Ishmael first, then Isaac. That which is born of flesh is flesh first. Then that which is born of spirit is spirit. Isaac is referred to one that is born of the spirit. Look at Galatians 4, 22 to 24. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a born babe, the other by a free woman. Next verse. But he who was of the born woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. See that? Which things are an allegory? The word allegory there means a figure of speech. They were all figurative communications. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which generate to bondage, which is Agar. Next verse. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answer it to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. The mother of us all. So imagine one from Mount Sinai and that is where Hagar departed to. And the Bible said the law was given in Mount Sinai where Hagar went to. The flesh. And the day the law was given in Mount Sinai, 3,000 people died. Because the law is the law of sin and death. When grace came on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people were saved. Because the grace of God gives us the law of the spirit of life 
in Christ Jesus. So it was not coincidental. Now back to Galatians chapter 4 verse 25 26 for this aga is mount sinai in arabia and answer to jerusalem which now is and is in bondage with her children next verse but jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all next verse for it is written rejoice thou barren that bearest not break forth and cry thou that travelest not for the desolate has many more children than she which had an husband that scripture is isaiah chapter 64 verse 1 Verse 28, 28 now of Galatians. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. Nevertheless, what say of the scripture? Cast out the born woman and her son. For the son of the born woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren... We are not children of the bond woman, but of the free. Same thing. How God said to Abraham, listen to your wife. Cast out the bond woman and her child. Same thing he says today. Cast out the law. Cast out the flesh. You see, there were four things the book of Galatians deals with. In the book of Galatians, you will see four things that are outstanding. Number one, the law. Number two, the flesh. Number three, the world. Number four, self. Number one, the law. In the book of Galatians, it stands out. Number two, the flesh. Number three, the world. And number four, self. All these four things was it as it were anti-grace. So we see in Isaac, Galatians 3.16. Galatians 3.16. Now to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made, he said not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, unto thy seed, which is Christ. Christ, the seed of Abraham. So the seed of Abraham is Christ, not Isaac. Isaac is the figure. Christ is the real deal. Christ is the real Isaac is a symbolic communication. The seed of Abraham. And the promise was made for the seed. The promise was to the seed. So in all those things we can expound and look at Christ within those activities. Again we see that same seed. Isaac now in a figure was taken to Mount Moriah to be slaughtered. That's a figurative expression. <laughs> the Bible says, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner, chosen of God, elected and precious. So we see Jesus in the rejection of Moses. We see Jesus in the rejection of Moses. Who eventually became the deliverer of Israel. Moses rejected. Moses became the deliverer. Jesus came to his own. They receive him not. He becomes eventually the deliverer. Figures of speech. Types and shadows. Acts 2.36 Look at what you know, uh, Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.36, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Whoa, I like this. Peter was very bold. But Lord, this same Jesus, not another one. This same Jesus, typical of what happened to Moses, in Exodus 12, Jesus, the Passover lamb. How do we know it was Jesus? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Purge out therefore the old living, that ye may be a new lump, as you are unliving. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So that lamb that was killed, and the blood put on the doorpost, and when the angel of death saw the blood, it passed over. That blood and that lamb that was killed was a figure of Christ. That wherever Christ is, death cannot reign there. 
He is our Passover. From Genesis chapter 12 verse 13. He is our Passover. In Exodus chapter 12 verse 13. He is the true priest of God. Who has pitched the tabernacle among men. Jesus the true priest of God. In Matthew chapter 26 verse 28. He said this is my blood of the New Testament. Which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So in all these events was hidden the mystery of God's redemptive plan for humanity tied around one person. And who is this person? Jesus. So in taking people through the Bible, Jesus was showing them these events, how these things spoke concerning himself. In the book of Leviticus, is a book full of offerings. The sin offering, the trespass offering, basically four types. Every offering was to represent man before God. That was the essence of offerings. Offerings represented man before God. Since man could not stand before God, God, man used a medium to stand before God. And that was a type and figurative about Jesus. Now look at what Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 says about the offerings. Hebrews chapter 10 verse number 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the commas they are unto perfect. It shows us clearly that the offerings could not make them perfect. Never. However, look at verse 4 of that Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 4 and we read a few verses. For it is not possible... It is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Next verse. Oh, I love this. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice an offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. You have never had any pleasure in them. Next verse. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. To do thy will. Next verse. Woo. Above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not. Neither has pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Next verse. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. So how did he do that? He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. He removes all the offerings and he became the singular offering for all time and eternity. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. Verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Next verse. Oh, I like this one. And every priest standard daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Glory to God. But this man. But this man. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. What did he do? sat down on the right hand of God next verse from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool verse 14 now for let's read like a mask where everybody want to go for by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified glory to God glory to God so Jesus was the offerings in the book of Leviticus so Leviticus was a type. The offerings were a type of Jesus. But in Christ we have one offering. Doing perfectly what all the four offerings could not do. So in Leviticus we see Jesus as the offering throughout Leviticus. Whether it's sin offering, trespass offering, all of them speak of Jesus. In the book of Numbers, Numbers 21 verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Wonderful. After the children of Israel committed sin and the judgment was serpent, you know, the serpent was the judgment for their sin, the repercussion. Several people died by the serpents. Look at verse 7 of that, Numbers 29. Let's start from 7 to 9. So, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Next verse. Next verse. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So what was the problem became the solution. Serpent problem, serpent solution. Jesus became sin. By becoming sin, he gave us salvation. Jesus became the problem and through becoming the problem became the solution. Now that shows you what Jesus did. God made him sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. In fact, John chapter 3 verse 14 puts it very clear. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Next verse. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So that serpent in the wilderness was a figurative expression of who? Of Christ. Is it getting clear? Now, I've told you before that the word lifted up means to die. Have I said that before? So, in looking at that fiery serpent, Jesus is that fiery serpent on the cross. Numbers 20, 11. We have also said that Jesus is the rock. Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also. Rock. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. Alright. So that rock that followed them was Christ. That is why Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land. Because Christ was to suffer once, but Moses struck the rock twice. When Moses struck the rock once, bam, which is death, burial, and resurrection, God told him, speak to the rock. Speak, but he struck. So that's why God told him, see the land you will not enter. Because you have started teaching false doctrine. So what's the difference between strike him twice and strike one and speak? Because what God was communicating is that after Jesus is struck once, the way to be saved is to confess. Okay? After Christ has been struck once, the way you can now be saved is that you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Then you become a partaker of what Christ has suffered. But instead of Moses speaking, Moses said, no, let's kill him twice. God says, stop. You have entered false doctrine. You will not follow them. Because he was to die one by one sacrifice. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Numbers 11, 7 to 9. And the manna was as coriander seed and the color thereof as the color of delium. All right, so he's talking about the manna. Which manna now? That manna that they ate, look at John 6, 57. As the living father has sent me and I live by the father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Next verse. Ooh. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So the manna was a typology of Jesus as the bread of life. Numbers 24, 16 to 17. He had said, which had the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Next verse. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall arise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. And Edom shall be a possession. Seah shall also be a possession for his enemies and Israel shall do valiantly that was prophetic that a star shall arise and we see that star luke 178 to 79 through the tender mercy of god whereby the day spring from on high has visited us that's a star next verse to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace revelation 22 verse 16 I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Glory to God. Second Peter 1.19. 
2 Peter 1 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star, which is Jesus, arise where? In your hearts. So he was the morning star that the scriptures prophesied of in Numbers 24. Now in Deuteronomy 18 verse 15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. That's in the book of Deuteronomy. Now we'll move from Numbers. Of thy brethren like unto me, unto him you shall hearken. And in Matthew 17, he said to Moses and Elijah, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So Jesus is that prophet that Moses spoke about in Deuteronomy 18, 15. In the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 2, verse 12 to 15, he is Rahab's scarlet cloth. Jesus is Rahab's scarlet cloth. Joshua 2, 12 to 15. That cloth that brought salvation to the prostitute. You will see it in Hebrews 11.31. Hebrews 11.31. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. When she had received the spies with peace. When she had received the spies with peace. So that cloth that she released for the spies was her faith. In the blood of Jesus. Scarlet is red. Which is a type of the blood. You know in Joshua we see Rahab. Enjoying the salvation plan of God. So that whole scenario. Is Christ in the book of Joshua. Judges 13.18. There is an appearance of God. In Judges chapter 13 verse 18. An appearance. Not of God. An appearance. And the angel of the Lord said unto him. Why accept thou thus after my name. Seeing Sin, it is secret, it's not in the original. Sin, secret. The word secret is where you have the word wonderful. His name shall be called. Uh -huh. So, sin, that secret, secret there is wonderful. So, the secret is Jesus. In the book of Ruth, he is the kinsman redeemer. In the book of Samuel, you see him in the suffering and the rejection. The suffering and rejection in the book of Samuel, first and second Samuel, and in the eventual enthronement of David. You see Jesus figuratively communicated by the sufferings, the rejection, and in the eventual enthronement of David. That speaks of Christ. He will be rejected of his brethren, accepted of God. Anointed in the midst of his brethren, like David was anointed. Rejected of his brothers. Eventually, he became the ruler over all of Israel. In First and Second Kings, we see Jesus, the greater than Solomon. And he is greater than the temple. Greater than Solomon, greater than the temple. Now watch, in First and Second Kings, you find the reign of kings. The glory of the kings. Which Jesus has a greater glory than all the kings. So the glory and the reign of the king speaks of the dominion and the reign of Jesus. It speaks of the dominion and the reign of Jesus. In fact, there was a throne of David upon which Jesus sat. And you know that Jesus is reigning on the throne of David today, right? Yeah. In Ezra chapter 9 verse 8 to 9. And now for a little space grace had been showed from the Lord our God. To leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail. The word nail in his holy place. That our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. That word a nail there is like a peg in the hole. A peg in the hole. Isaiah explains the nail in Isaiah 22, 22 to 23. And in Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 15 to 20. He is the bread from heaven. The bread from heaven. He is the water out of the rock. Jesus said that already in John 6, 57 to 58. John 
6, 57 to 58. He is the bread. He is the water from the rock. He is the rock and he is the bread that Nehemiah spoke about. In Esther, God was never mentioned in the book of Esther. You will never find God mentioned in the book of Esther. But he is in the preservatory nature of Esther. Esther preserved the whole nation. If I perish, I perish. Okay, so that preservatory nature of Esther was Christ in typology. I remember Esther fasted and prayed three days and three nights. Death, burial, and resurrection. So God is not mentioned, but there's a figurative communication. In Job chapter 9 verse 33. Job chapter 9 verse 33. Neither is there any day's man between ox that might lay his hand upon us both. Immediator. Job is saying, the reason why things are bad for me like this is because there's no mediator. There's no one to stand between me and God. So the day's man there is Jesus. Job 19.25. Speaking about Jesus. Job 19.25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Next verse. Oh. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Next verse. Whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. Though my reins be consumed within me, I know my Redeemer lives. So Job had Christ in typology as his redeemer. In the book of Psalm, which is the fullest material, you can talk about Christ from chapter 1, chapter 2, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Psalms chapter 2, where they prayed that prayer in Acts chapter 4, when they were beaten, they came back to their company and reported all that the chief priests have said and they lifted up their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God. Who by the mouth of David thy servant have said. Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine the thing? The kings and the rulers have set themselves against Christ and against his anointed. But now Lord behold their threatening and grant unto us. So Psalms chapter 2 talks about Jesus. Are we still in the building? Psalms 22. That was the same cry that Jesus made on the cross. Because David was prophesying concerning the Christ. David was complaining about the sufferings he was going through. But it was a typology. Of what Christ was going to go through for humanity. Then Psalm 16, we see the reign of Christ. Psalm 23 and Psalm 24, the reign of Christ. Where he says, in your presence is fullness of joy. He's not talking about when we gather like this in your presence. He's talking about resurrection. Psalm 16 verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Next verse. Therefore my heart is glad. And my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Next verse. Ooh. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer the unholy one to see corruption. Next verse. Oh, I like this. Thou will show me the path of life. Oh, in thy presence is fullness of joy. The day of resurrection. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So that scripture is a prophetic scripture of the resurrection of Christ. So, Peter will put it like this in Acts chapter 2 verse 25. Acts chapter 2 verse number 25. For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Right hand. Right hand. He is on my right hand. So that was a Christocentric material speaking of the resurrection of Christ. Psalm 103 verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Twelve. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. Next verse. For he knoweth our frame. He remembered that we are dust. Next verse. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourished. For the wind passeth over it, and is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord, is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children.
I thought I would have a powerful amen. I didn't hear that amen at all. I want to hear it louder, loudest. Glory! So beginning at Moses. It has to begin at Moses. And all the prophets. He expounded, which is what we have done part one, right? Unto them in how many scriptures? We have not finished with. In all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Stand on your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory! Shall blessed. Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, thank you for your precious, holy, written word. Thank you for revelation knowledge. Thank you that you are establishing your people in the truth that is in the gospel. Thank you that your word is growing mightily on our inside. And thank you, Lord, that the revelation of Jesus is growing big in our hearts. So I pray for everybody connected to this service and everybody in this building. Continually, the eyes of your understanding is being enlightened. You are strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. Christ dwells in your heart by faith. You are rooted and grounded in the love of God. 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 In the name of Jesus. And whatever is not planted by God right now around your life is rooted out. Is rooted out. Sickness, disease. Sickness, disease. In the name of Jesus, lose your holes and be flushed out. In the name of Jesus. Now receive your healing from your head to the soles of your foot. God's healing power flows through your body right now. It flows through your body right now. I say God's healing power flows through your body right now. God's healing power flows through your body now. Satan, get your hands off in the name of Jesus. Where you need a miracle right now, receive a miracle. Ayana Gagaga, Lagoro to Sekelia. The miracle of God's favor. Grace, 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 grace. Grace, 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 grace. Grace, 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 grace in the name of Jesus. Barriers removed, obstacles demolished in the name of Jesus. And I declare, La Cosa Badaga, Membra Gada, your steps are ordered, your steps are ordered. You are not confused, you have direction. You are not confused, you have direction in the name of Jesus. You have solution. Say it very loud three times I have solution. Two more times. One more time. Now go ahead and celebrate solutions. Celebrate solutions. Is that how you celebrate? I say celebrate solutions. Glory! 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 Turn to two, three people. Tell them you know what to do. You know what to do. You know what to do. Tell somebody concerning that situation, you know what to do. You have answers right now. You have direction right now. You have direction right now. You have answers right now. Go, 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 go. You know what to do. Speak it into your neighbor's life. You know what to do. You know, you know, you know, you know what to do. You have direction. You have clarity. You have answers. Your mind is clear. You are not confused. You know what to do. You know what to do. Now shout it very loud. I know what to do. Say it two more times. Say it one more time. So it doesn't matter how much conspiracy the devil has calculated. It doesn't matter the confusion that the world is going through. Once you look, you know what to do. You know where to put your leg. You know where to avoid. You know when to speak. You know when to keep quiet. You know when to move in. And you know when to pull out. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody here. And if you are the one that is walking in the reality of the leading of the spirit, you are walking in the light. Can I have that amen on a note of finality? Somebody shout, I know what to do. Somebody say, I am over and not under. I know what to do. Jaku nakasadaya. Nekorotosakaya. Biborogodozekaya.
he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life i follow jesus i cannot be confused i know what to do hallelujah the remaining days of your life you will swim in victory oh you will swim in victory you will swim in victory we are so grateful for having you here on our platform kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here and also like this message for us do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from thank you message community